morning, everybody. Um, when I was asked to moderate this event, I was asked also what I thought success looked like for this panel. And I said it was two things. One, that everyone leave this room reminded that there are powerful stories with inspirational levels of success all around us. And it's not just NCLS where you can learn from others' experiences. And two, that we all leave here with a renewed sense of pride for this institution, for our profession, and for my generation. Because next to me are five people of my generation who have overcome conflict of magnitude that some of us will never face. So without further ado, I'd like to get just to the speakers. And the <laughs> Hello everyone, I am Cadet Third Class Johanse Salimu. I'm from South Central Los Angeles, and um, I want to tell you my story. Um, I have 16 siblings, and uh, I want to explain that. <laughs> so um, my mom and dad, they met, and my dad had children before then, before he met her, and she had never had children. And my dad told my mom, you know, I've never taken care of any of my kids. And I want to have kids, and I want to take care of them this time. And my mom said, cool, I want to have kids too, but I don't think I want that responsibility. And, uh, so they got together, and they had five kids between the two of them. And uh, I'm part of that, that litter of five. <laughs> um, so my dad, he tried to raise us. And uh, he was really old when he, when he started off. He was about 50, 55 when I was born. And um, I just remember. He was, a, he was a bus driver, so he didn't make a lot of money, but he had a lot of kids and a lot of responsibility, and he was really trying to be that man, be that father figure for us that he was never for his other kids. And he, uh, he fell short in that his health declined, and he just he couldn't take care of us in the same way. And my mom tried to take over that same task, that same goal that he had in the beginning. Uh, before I talk about our transition to living with our mom, I want to talk about who she was in my life before she was always there. So um, she would periodically take one of the five of us, and she would shower us in gifts, and we would just love her. I was always a mama's boy as a little kid, and I just remember every time my mom came around, there were presents, there was love, and I was happy. Um, but when we started living with her, I realized that she, um, she wasn't the same person. It was my big brother who pulled me aside, and he told me, the reason why mom's not in our life is because she has a lot of mental issues. She's uh, clinically diagnosed with about three mental diseases, one of them being she's bipolar. So um, she's not going to be the same person all the time. My first time seeing her have an episode, uh, I was in middle school. And she freaked out in a way that I just couldn't believe that she was my mother. I was like, do you still love me? What am I to you? Am I, am I your child? What's, what's changed with our relationship. And she just, she couldn't respond in the same way. And I kind of developed this sort of hatred towards that. And she, um, she ended up in a mental hospital. And we were kind of squatting on an apartment we already had. And so we weren't paying the rent. And eventually, we got evicted. And you know my mom wasn't there. And when she finally came back, the day we're moving out, uh, everyone five kids that out of that five, everyone's going off on their own path, doing their own thing, and I just remember my younger brother. He um, he didn't know where to go. He didn't know what to do. So he stayed with my mom, and they hopped around from shelter to shelter for about a, a year. Uh, I was I just finished eighth grade, and I was starting high school. I had a lot of friends. I had a really outgoing kind of personality, so I had a lot of people to help me out without even having to tell them my full situation. And um, I did that for a while. I would go to high school. I'd sleep in the stairwells. And I had a really bad hygiene problem, which is what my counselor would tell me I had. And <laughs> it wasn't because I didn't know how to clean myself. I just I didn't have the resources, you know? But that was a good excuse. You know, oh, I didn't wash my clothes because I'm not that type of person. I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna do that. It's not because I'm homeless. And I slept next to your classroom last night. <laughs> Um, so eventually, uh, one of my teachers caught on. And he walks outside around 10 o'clock. And he's like, why are you still here? I know all your programs are done. Because in high school, I, believe me, I did everything 
to have something to do. I was captain of the football team, track team. I was captain of the robotics team. I was captain of the chess club. I ran academic decathlon. I mean, I didn't do anything that had to do with going home. So <laughs> I, um, I told him, hey, uh, I don't got any, anywhere to stay. I didn't book a place at a friend's house tonight. So uh, I'm going to sleep right down here. You got really, uh, really good heat right outside your classroom. That's where I'm going to be. <laughs> and uh, he asked me about my family. And I told him about my little brother and my mom, them going through different shelters, bouncing around, and you know the lifestyle he was living. And I was like, you know, I, I got this. I got everything together. I'm going to take care of myself. And he kind of impressed upon me the importance of like, you know, why are you doing that? And you're not helping out your little brother and your mom. So uh, I made that decision. That was first semester, ninth grade. I made the decision I would go back with my mom and my little brother. <laughs> and I, uh, I remember day one arrived at the shelter. And they gave me a little bed, and they gave me a blanket. And that was, you know, that was the extent of all my worldly possessions. There was that cot, and there was nothing else. I had nothing in my pockets. I had no possessions. That was my lifestyle. I was going to start living with my little brother and set an example. But I didn't have any tools to do it with. I, uh, I coached him through hardships that I myself didn't feel like I could be in. I remember being in the, in the speaker. You know, joking to him about, hey, if, if the potatoes are, are cold and, you know, if, if everything's soggy and the, you don't like the corn, guess what? We're still going to eat tonight, so be appreciative of him. It's going to be great, man. And I just remember keeping that positive attitude with him. Um, one of the things that really, really hurt at me when I went back was um, I saw the people my little brother was hanging around. And... Everyone at that shelter, they were all high school dropouts. They're all excuse makers. And none of them had the grades, none of them had any type of ambition to get out of the situation they were in. And I was taking all the steps that I thought I needed to to get out of my situation. And my little brother was following me so closely. And he thought I knew a way out. But I was, it was the blind leading the blind. And somehow we, we both did make it out. But um, I want to talk to you about how he tried to do every program that I did. So we were in robotics together, and one of the companies just walks by like, wow, that's a, that's a really cool robot. Like, what does it do? And I explained everything to him. I'm like, I got this. This is my thing. And I mean, at this competition, there's all these different students with all this support and everything going on, and you know, they're doing their hobby. Me, I'm trying to stay out of this lifestyle that I know I have to go back to at the end of the day. And a guy walking by just says, you know what? I've got a lot of different projects like that that I need done in my, co my company, and um, I could probably hire you. And he hires me, and I'm working at the Aerospace Corporation in El Segundo, and I'm a lab technician, and I'm fixing and evaluating flight cells for satellites because of my s small techniques in, in robotics. And um, that paycheck was the first time I was actually able to provide for my family. Before, I was surviving with them, and once I start making an income, I was able to, to make sure my brother could eat at night. It was no longer, you know, I'm going to eat tonight and you're not. You're going to eat tonight, I'm not. Mom's going to eat tonight and it's more important. We don't want her to have an episode tonight. It was, I have money in my pocket and we walked into a supermarket and I was able to, I was able to pay for the things that we, we took out of there. We didn't have to steal. And uh, I just remember how proud I felt being able to support my family in that way. And um, when, it came, when it came time to pick colleges, I, uh, I had the grades to go to Stanford, Harvard, UCLA. And that's where a lot of my classmates were going who were taking the same AP classes as me. And they were just like, you know, we're going we're gonna to achieve. We're going to go to Berkeley. We're going to get engineering degrees. And I kind of had the same vision. But I couldn't take away the support that I had from my family. You know, I, I was that pillar. I was, I was picking up where my father had left off, where my mother couldn't continue. I was picking up and providing for my little brother and being that father figure at a very young age. And I was just like, I'm a man right now. And if I leave, I'm going to leave my little brother in this situation where he's just a boy and has no one to, to help him. And I saw that the Air Force Academy pays. <laughs> they pay people to go to school here, which is which is a blessing. I'm, I'm just so grateful to be here. 
And when I found out that I was going to go to college and still support my family, I jumped on that opportunity. And that's why I'm here in front of you today. I'm here because it's important for me to support my family. And this is the opportunity I chose to do it. Thank you for letting me share my story. So now we're going to open up the floor for questions. I'm sure there are plenty. So how I want you to do this, uh, if you have a question, raise your hand. I'll call on you. Uh, please stand up and ask your question loud enough for the panel and the rest of the room to hear you so we can all hear the question and the, the answer. Uh, so does anyone have any questions? One more. Just for you, yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> I got one more. Um, Yo, I'm and Heather. I know you all are really protected with your little brothers, and I was wondering uh, what they're doing now. Um, my little brother is majoring at physics at Tuskegee University. 